Good afternoon. Welcome to Simplify. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant Bonstein, or commonly referred to as Staff Sergeant B. Before we get started, I'm just going to go over our historical facts on October 14th, as we do every week. In 1940, in the Marines, Major General Commandant Thomas Holcomb issued orders to mobilize the Marine Reserves for World War II. And in the Navy in 1948, the women Marine officers on active duty sworn in as commissioned officers in regular Navy under the Women's Service Intelligence Act on June of 1948 by the Secretary of Navy, John L. Sullivan. And in 1950, in the Army, General MacArthur, in a meeting with President Truman on Wake Island, predicted that the war would be over by Christmas and China would not intervene. And in the Air Force, in 2001, warplanes carried out the heaviest bombing in nine days over Afghanistan. The Pentagon called it the slow-moving aircrafts, the AC-130s, uh, spectacular gunships to target around uh, Kandahar. Without further ado, my next guest, retired Army, E-7. Uh, I forget what the rank you call Sergeant it. Sergeant First Class. Sergeant First Class. Absolutely. It would be Alan Bigelow. Welcome to Simplify. Thanks. It's good to be here. All right. Uh, it's fun to get on shows with other veterans and talk about things, you know, that affect us. Yeah. You know? So, uh, give us a little uh, history about A little yourself. history. Well, uh, originally uh, signed up in the uh, Army, of course, in uh, October of 1979. Did the delayed entry program that they had. It was a, uh, a, a great recruiting tool that, you know, they had at the time. They said, you know, with We'll lock you in early and give you any school you want and send you off and, and you know, you can go kill bad guys. So, of course, you know, in, in high school, most of us really, in, unless we're focused on one thing, we just, we don't know what we want to do. So I say, all right, I'll give it a shot. So uh, in the uh, summer of 1980, I was shipped off to Fort Dix, New Jersey, where they had this really ingenious training program. And it was a, a co-ed training program then. So in our crew, we had uh, 42 women and 130 guys. Do the math. <laughs> uh, but all in all, it was it was a lot of fun, and and I really enjoyed the basic training uh, at Fort Dix. Uh, unfortunately, our barracks were right at the end of the runway, and so McGuire Air Force Base is where everybody ships out if they're going over the Atlantic, and. Of course, every jet in the world came through there, so we didn't sleep much for the whole uh, six weeks that we were there, and then we moved on. Well, the planes ran 24-7? They ran 24-7, I mean, every day, all day they, long. They didn't have a... They didn't cut it off because they flew over the Army base, and it didn't, it didn't matter. You're in the Army. Suck it up. <laughs> yeah, so, so we ended up, uh, you know, not getting a lot of rest, but having a lot of friends and, and making a lot of really good memories. Uh, you could still smoke in the army then. Yeah, you, you could still, still had smoke. your rations. Yeah, you had you, you know, you could get your cigarettes and smoke, and you know, if the drill sergeant was feeling really nice, he'd take you over to the PX, let you get a couple cigarettes, and, and do what you got to do. Uh, you know, one of the guys we had, uh, and and I felt so sorry for him because he smoked, and we hadn't had a smoke break all day. It just was one of those really intense training days. Just go, 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 go. You know, run, run, run. Push up, pull up. You know, jumping jacks, you know, strip your M16 down, throw your hand grenade around. This is one of those days. We got back to the barracks just before dinner time, and he ran in, did what we had to do in the barracks, ran around to the smoking area real quick, and started puffing him up. And he was going to sneak him a cigarette no matter what. So this, this poor kid, is, his, his last name is Boje, and he's from, you know, French name. We all kind of kidded him a little bit, and it was like, you got to smoke, don't smoke, don't get caught, don't get caught. Sure enough, here comes the drill sergeant right out the door. Like, oh, God, we're dead. Because, you know, in basic, everybody does what everybody does. You, you know, your buddy does something wrong, you got to pay for it. So he saw Boje in the uh, smoking area and lit him up. He just jumped, he started in on it. You want to smoke, you want to smoke. You get that whole pack in your mouth right now, private. And he did. He put that whole pack into his mouth and smoked every one of those cigarettes in about a minute and a half. It took about 10 seconds, and, of course, 
he managed to put a new layer of fertilizer on the ground. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Basic training was a blast. You know? And then from there, uh, went by train and the Great Adventures East Coast trains. You know, we had the air base next door, but they had to put us on a train. So I'm right. trying to figure the math there. It didn't work out, <clears> but <throat> it was still a good adventure. Took, it took us by train to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Of course, home of the mighty armor. And I learned to fix the tanks, and then from there was shipped to Germany. So your MOS school was? Okay. My first one was as a tank mechanic, yeah. Oh, really? That was your MOS? Uh-huh. Okay. Did you ever change MOSs? Or I did. Just... I did. I, I transferred. I bumped it around a little bit. I went, uh, I jumped into the artillery, and I was a fire direction center chief. Oh, okay. A big title for the guy that tells them where to point the guns. <laughs> Fort uh, Observer. Actually, no. We, no they called us. The Ford Observer called us, told us where, you know, oh, we gave hey, you we want to, yeah, we gave, gave us coordinates. We okay. figured out the math and said, okay, Cannon, go about three degrees that way and shoot. All right. Um, we did that at uh, Fort Bragg, and uh, Fort Bragg was quite an adventure in itself. Uh, when you're the duty unit, you don't get to go anywhere because your duty, quote, is to be ready. Right. And uh, you're on a two hour recall no matter what. Even if you're at home, bet, you know, dead asleep. And at the time, I had gotten married, so I lived off base. And you had two hours to get in and be at the airfield ready to load onto the plane. So essentially, you had about 20 minutes. Because by the time you got your crew together, your weapons, you got your duffel bags, you got everything else ready to go, it's, you got to be there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and while I was there, we actually were loaded... Uh, three separate times and uh, we were actually flew once and uh, that was of course during Panama and we got out over the Gulf of Mexico and by the time we made the Gulf of Mexico they were done in Panama so they turned us around and landed us in a place called Avon Park Florida not much there bunch of swamps 